things I've got growing, growing. Um, this is a very tiny patch of lemon balm. Um, one of my favorite herbs. Mm, it's amazing smelling. It uh, smells kind of like herbal lemonade. Um, it's really nice. And going over here and everywhere else in my backyard right now is sheep sorrel. And this has a very lemony flavor. Um, it is a nice addition to salads. Um, very bright flavored, kind of uh, astringent, drying in the mouth. Um, just be careful not to eat too much of it. If you do, it is uh, a source of oxalates and can cause crystals in your um, kidneys. Uh, in small amounts, it's not an issue, but if you've ever watched Downton Abbey and the scene where the cook almost poisoned the family, and I believe it was in the first episode, might have been, she's, she talks about salt of sorrel. That's what it is. It's uh, basically barkeeper's friend. Um, but like I said, perfectly safe to eat as long as you're not pounding down pounds of it. You'll be fine. Um, so if you see this weed growing in your yard, it's a very distinct shape. It's got these little ears on it. It has sheep sorrel. We had talked about poke weed before. Um, this is, if you've ever heard of poke salad, that's what they're referring to. Don't eat this stuff. Um, it is poisonous. You have to have, you have to know when to pick it at the right time. It's the young shoots and things like that. Um, it's kind of an Appalachian delicacy. Um, and it grows everywhere around here. Has those big, uh, well not big, uh, they're kind of racemes of like uh, purple berries. I showed you the white flowers and they turn into purple berries. Birds eat them and poop them all over your car, make a huge mess out of everything, turn your deck purple. Um, that's that's what that's from. Uh, we hear you, Carl. Thank you. This is my Japanese maple. I've been kind of grooming it for a while. It's planted directly in the ground, and it does fine. Um, it's a little miscolored this year. I don't know what's going on with it, but it's normally every last bit of it's that dark color, a dark red. But it's been a weird year, so it could just be a, a heat and a drought stress issue. Take a look at this adorable pea pod. That's okra. Look yeah, that itty bitty cucumber. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it, but, or if you even knew, you know, sometimes when you pick a fruit, it's, uh, if you pick it too early, it's like really sour um, and dry and inedible. Cucumbers taste exactly like cucumbers, no matter what size they are. Um, when they're bigger, they can get a little bit bitter, but you can literally pick this tiny of a cucumber and it tastes just like a regular cucumber. It's just itty bitty and no seeds. Um, wouldn't recommend it. You get a lot more out of it if you let them stay on longer, but just didn't know if you guys knew that. I thought it was pretty interesting. Now, this is my ginger patch, growing it out. Some baby brown turkey figs that I uh, air layered. My turmeric, my olive trees, my little mango tree down there. That's him. Putting out some leaves. He's doing pretty good, actually. Um, spearmint. Mm. Uh, catnip. Another one of my favorites. Really good relaxation herb. And peppermint. Who doesn't love peppermint? Some itty bitty eggplants that I waited too long to transplant. Some seedlings of the uh, pole beans. Or bush beans actually. These are baby marshmallow. Don't know if you guys knew it, but hibiscus, rose of Sharon, 
uh, marshmallow, um, what else, okra, um, they're all in the same family, um, the mallow family, I'm trying to remember the name, Malvaceae, maybe, I don't know, um, they're all in the same family, which you can see if you look at their flowers, um, and they all have mucilaginous properties, so they've got kind of a slimy feel when you crush the flowers or the fruit. Um, uh, also, out of the whole batch of seeds that I got, I planted every last one of them exactly the same, at exactly the same time. This is the only hibiscus sabdariffa that uh, sprouted. None of the rest of them did anything at all. Uh, now this is the Jamaican Roselle. Um, the calluses of these plants can be um, brewed into a delicious tea. Um, huge fan of hibiscus tea. Um, it's kind of got like a cranberry-ish flavor. Um, so I'm... this one's doing well. It's actually the stems are reddening up quite a bit, putting out new growth. And this is the third time I've repotted it in a relatively short time because it keeps sticking roots out of the bottom. So um, I'm really excited about that, trying to get it enough sun. I've got all this grass. I need to pull all this stuff out and like mow this down in this fenced-in garden area. I had to put this in because I had um, got a big problem with like birds coming down and squirrels digging stuff up so I basically took an old chicken pen and turned it into a little garden area. It's a mess because I've not had enough time to take care of everything. So that's cucumbers, more cucumbers, eastern redbud, uh, lots of beans and peas and tomatoes and uh, lots of stuff going on. Um, ooh, look at that tiny little pea flower. It's so delicate. This guy is getting thick and crazy. I don't know what's going on out here. It looks like I might... I don't know. Might have some blooms trying to set on the uh, on the okra. I love okra. Uh, some more cucumbers. Uh, this I actually am growing three varieties of cucumbers this year. Um, one is uh, seeds that I had last year, and they were really, really good cucumbers. Uh, oh my gosh, they were amazing. They're uh, they call them midget white cucumbers. They're very, very short. I mean, they're only like two inches, two and a half inches long, but they're very fat and they're white and they are delicious. And a lot of cucumbers will go like super woody and bitter um, if you let them stay on the vine too long. And I noticed with those, although the uh, skins would get harder, they wouldn't get woody um, and they definitely weren't bitter. So. If you let them go too long, pluck it off, peel it. It's a perfectly good cucumber. You know, as long as you don't let the seeds set all the way, you'll be fine. Of course, you could just scrape those out, I suppose. Um, but really excited that those have done really well. I mean, they are taking off. They're covering everything. And a bunch of uh, uh, bush beans growing. They seem to be doing fairly well. Um, had a little bout where some of the leaves got a little spotty um, and this almost looks like a bean mosaic or something but I'm not sure because I've never dealt with that before um, but as long as they're growing they're fine um, these are heirloom tomatoes I've got oh, what are they called big red and boxcar willy and I grew all those from seed, um, and they are almost, gosh, what are they? My arm's straight out in front of me. Like I said, I'm six foot tall, so they're pretty good sized. Um, lots of sage. We eat a lot of sage. I love sage. These are just little Roma tomatoes that I got at the local nursery. And uh, anyway, 
more cucumbers and, and uh, beans. Um, so I just thought you guys might like to see the garden, see what's going on. This is Tally coming to say hi in the garden. He's our old patriarch cat. He's He's got a cold right now. Um, he's got a thyroid condition, which he takes medicine for every day. And uh, he's got a little bit of a cold, but he's still in good spirits and slobbering all over me. Um, but we got him some medicine. Hopefully he'll feel better soon. He seems to be in pretty good spirits. He seems to be breathing a little bit better since we gave him his uh, homeopet nose drops. <laughs> He's in a good mood and clawing me, so that's a good sign. Do you see these chickens? What are you doing, Carl? Alright, off you go. Here's uh, the orchid family. I've got some watering to do, some things to take care of. Um, for the most part, everybody's doing okay. Uh, Todd, your uh, little um, bulbophyllum is doing some growing and the arbophyllum it's got little sprouts on it um, this guy's maintaining so we'll see how he does oh we got some good news and some bad news um, this pacopodium kind of sunk in he's a little squishy uh, it feels not solid, you know, uh, all the way down. He's kind of, so I'm just not watering him right now. Don't know if it was an overwatering issue. This guy right next to him, finally waking up, which I need to turn him so he doesn't get one-sided. But he's doing well. This guy putting out leaves like a champ. Um, little elephant ear, had a couple of days where it got kind of hot and it dried out a bit quick, so we had a couple of leaves go crispy, but he's hanging on, he's doing his thing, we're just keeping, keeping track of that, I'm checking him daily, uh, don't want that to happen, um, oh, I know what else, ta-da, this is my... Vanda Suxamarin Sunlight um, that I bought as a rescue and has had some hard times. I mean, you can see his leaves look wrinkly. He's got diminished roots. I finally cleaned out a bunch of the dead roots, but determined to live on, he has bloomed. Um, and this is the first Vanda I've ever had bloom, and it is just astonishing. Um, very small flowers. It's still very young orchid, but my god is it beautiful. That color, that uh, kind of burnt orange. I hope you can see that. I don't know how this is going to show up, but it's gorgeous in real life. And um, the um, God, my brain. The um, Dendrobium nobilis that I thought were putting out little bloom spikes are doing what Dendrobium nobilis like to do which is produce a bunch of cakeys. And I have had to top up this potting medium no less than three times because some bird around here keeps coming and stealing it. Um, I even put flash tape on here hoping that would scare the bird off. Did not deter him at all. So there is some bird nearby, very nearby that has quite the impressive uh, nest right now um, with fresh good uh, orchid potting medium lining it um, so there's that um, my alocasia uh, laterbachiana is that what it is? yeah um, I ended up splitting it and the little guy is putting out new leaves the big guy's hanging on, doing well. I've got growth on my cacti. Um, 
Here's a little lady finger that Todd sent me. Putting out some new growth. I'm trying to, I'm, I need to put these guys out in the back where they can get better sun. Um, because I don't want them etiolating. Um, this one appears to be trying to grow. Uh, they just really need some more light, I think. Um, and uh, the Euphorbia tortillus is doing pretty good. Um, all the growth is still pretty good uh, on it. Um, got new growth on all of the holiday cactus. Um, this guy taken off like crazy, and so is my neon pothos. And this little chopped down uh, umbrella plant. Um, and this little Kalanchoe decided to bloom. They almost look like little blueberry flowers because they're bell-shaped, but they're just so tiny and delicate and pretty. Uh, so this guy's filling in quite well. A little bit of etiolation here. Um, I just really need to get them into some brighter light, but check out these uh, little aloes. They're doing crazy stuff. Just getting big and strong. Um, and I've got an elderberry I picked up at the local Master Gardener sale that we had at the County Ag Center, along with a couple other things. Um, yeah, that was pretty neat. I would love to see a little more um, variation there. But that's definitely something I'll go back to see again. Um, that was pretty cool. They have a little tiny arboretum with a few trees and some nice uh, plants, some flowers and landscape plants out there. So that was a neat trip. And the Alocasia Amazonica. Um, pumping out new leaves and trying to do some stuff down here at the bottom. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe some little shoots. Get some new, new uh, babies started going in there. I don't know. Let's see, and uh, my big Schefflera umbrella plant. Finally got him outside today. Um, I, this thing gets so heavy, it's impossible to move. Uh, I had to wait a couple weeks for it to get almost too dry, and then I had to take it out with a hand truck. Um, just because the pot is so big and so heavy, um, I almost put my back out last year trying to take it in. So, um, my Empress Wu Hostas, there's that. Some of my begonias I grew in the house over winter from last year. Um, just kind of doing their thing. Uh, these were all cuttings in this pot. Right here. Those were all cuttings that are just stuck in dirt and watered them like once a month, once every other month through the winter, through the cold months, so I could put them outside. Um, and my anthuriums that I, I took all of them and repotted them into um, like one pot. Just, I'm trying to condense what I can. I, I told you guys, I just don't have a lot of space um, and I don't want to put a lot in. Um, if something becomes too much of a chore, you're not likely to take care of them. Um, and I don't want anything to happen to my plants. So, as I offload some, I'll have more time for others. Um, but I'm also trying to do group pottings where I can, so it's one pot to water instead of ten. Um, that helps. That helps a bit. My Syngonium putting out a flush of new foliage. Um, as it's in more light, it's getting more green um, and losing some of its white. But there's still some leaves that have a good amount of white on them. I'm um, just kind of going wild right now, and I'm just going to let it. Next time it's time to repot it, I'm going to go to the nursery, I think, and try to get a moss pole. Uh, he had... The local nursery, my favorite local nursery, they have quite the selection of moss poles. Um, 
in a bunch of different sizes. So I'm lucky to have that available nearby. And they're the same ones that you see everybody doing in the YouTube videos um, with the little clips and the kind of net over the uh, like fiber. Um, so I have a good selection of those available right down the road. I don't have to wait for them to come in or anything. I'm super lucky uh, with that um, because nothing is available around here. Um, so I will be just as pleased as I can be um, once I can get this guy repotted. But I think he's got a little more time before he's ready for a repot. But he's doing some vining. Now look, that looks like a new growth right in there. Hmm. And there's another one down there. So, things are happening. I'll just try to keep these guys cared for. Um, try not to let them get too laggy. Anyway, this video is also long enough. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm so sorry I've been away for so long. Um, thank you guys for your concern. Um, I'm going to try to get back to a more regular schedule. Um, I don't want to disappoint any of you guys. So, like I said, with my possible schedule change coming up, uh, hopefully starting around the beginning of July, um, I'll be able to start posting more regularly. Um, I've, I've got so many projects to do around the house, uh, other things to take care of. Um, plants are definitely on the list, trying to trying to keep things going. Uh, I love my plants. I don't want anything to happen to them. But, uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you liked the video, hit like. Uh, if you're new here and you are <laughs> putting up with my rambling for three videos, um, and you think you might want to stick around and see what else is new, um, hit subscribe. Thank you to those of you who stuck with me and um, keep returning, looking for new content. Um, bear with me. I just got to get through this last little bit of the uh, heavy part of summer for us at work. Um, and, and I'll get back to more regular schedule. Um, anyway, see you guys next time.